Hello. In this video, we're going to give you a high-level overview of RaveTree. RaveTree is a work management software platform that does four primary things. Project management, resource planning, time and expense tracking, and digital asset management. When you first sign into RaveTree, you're taken to this dashboard. And the dashboard allows each user to choose what information they see. In fact, the dashboard is customizable. We can go over here to Edit Dashboard, and you can see that we can add different widgets, we can remove them, and we've got dozens of different widget options that you can choose from so that you are only getting the information that matters to you. In fact, you can even go in and create multiple dashboards. So here we've got a few other dashboards that we've created. Um, some of the widgets we have on this page are information about project status, the different types of projects, project priority. Down here we have my timers. So timers are just one of the ways in which you can log time on RaveTree. You can go over here and start up a timer. And you'll notice that it's in sync with the timer up here. So if I leave the page, I can always see that I'm logging time. In fact, I can click on this to view the timers. And the timers are great if you need to jump around throughout the day. You know, maybe I need to suddenly jump over and start working on this item. And click play, and you'll notice that it paused the timer that was playing before. It'll also tell me when I started the timer. Over here we have my work items. These are going to be all of my assigned work items. And we can see the work item name, the project in which it's associated, if any, uh, the start, due date, and also the workflow phases. So I can easily move it through the workflow by clicking on one of these and the workflows are fully customizable. I can click on one of these work item names and I get this nice slide out panel that will show me the details for that particular work item. So in this case it happens to be a user story and I can see that it has one task inside of it. Uh, likewise this could be a task and it would have or could have subtasks inside of it. I can upload files to that individual work item I can view any time that's been logged to that work item, view its history, and then we also have real-time comment feeds. Now, the main navigation for RaveTree is over here on the left. This is the navigator, and you can see that we've got several different sections on the platform. So let's go ahead and just dive into projects. So here we get this nice card view for all of the projects. In fact, by default, it's going to show me only projects in which I'm a member, but I can go over here and I can customize what I see. We have some really powerful filtering capabilities. So these are some of our project filters. And you can see uh, this is our, our demo guy, Mark. Uh, but of course, we can change these parameters if we want. In fact, you can create your own filters and save them. Your saved filters will show up in this drop-down list so you can easily run a previously created filter without having to open up the filter uh, dialog. Now the card view is nice because it gives you a visual overview of how each project is tracking. So for example, I can hover over these colored bars and it will show me the percentage of work items within this project that are in different stages. I can see who the project members are. I can also view the type of project. So there's a website project, advertising, mobile application. These are fully customizable and of course you can filter by those by those custom project types over here in the project filters. And we've also got a list view. So again we're looking at the same projects. I can see how they're tracking and then who the client is, um, if any, for, for each of these projects. So let's go ahead and just click into one of these projects. We'll check out this client web application project. And you'll see that we have different sections. So we've got this overview section. This is where you're taking when you first go to the project page. We can see important dates. We can also see how we're tracking against time. If you do uh, you know, keep track of budgeted hours or if you're doing uh, billable hours, you can see all that information here. Uh, some other overview information. You can add tags to projects you can, and you can filter by those tags later. You can put in milestones for your project, and then we give you a few graphs to show you visually how you're tracking within that project. And just like on the work item pages, uh, you also have a real-time comment feed at the project level. And you'll notice that you can add sub comments, you can at mention your colleagues, even attach photos and videos to your comments. 
and each user is notified when a comment is made based on their personal notification settings. And we have really granular controls over how each user is notified. They can choose to be notified through email or through one of these internal RaveTree notifications that would show up here. So just looking at some of the other tabs on this page, uh, we've got work items. Of course, this is going to show all the work items within this particular project. And you'll see how some of these work items are nested. So here we've got a subtask that's inside of this task. I can easily spin up a timer or log time against each individual work item. I can also copy a work item if I want to. And we'll show you some other information here. Um, for example, start date, end date for that individual work item. Also, how many days we have remaining before something is due. And of course, you know, this is the demo account. So these, these numbers have gotten a little bit off. But as you can see, um, it will tell you if you've gone over that original uh, time frame. And then we give you some really powerful information around time estimates. So we have um, estimated time. So when I create a work item, I can say, you know, I think it's going to take 20 hours. Or let's just look at this one. I think it's going to take four hours. Um, but then, as is the case with this item, this happens to be an epic, and it has some nested items inside of it, each of which might have their own time estimates. So I've got this estimated roll-up column. So essentially what happened is I estimated this particular epic to be four hours, yet when I created child work items inside of it and gave each of those estimates, it ended up rolling up to 12 and a half hours. So this can give me some indication in terms of how accurate I am at estimating how long things will take. And then it shows me the delta between the two. So in this case, I was, I was way off on my original estimate. Um, this is great for planning purposes. When you don't yet know the level of granularity you're going to need for the project, you just kind of want to get a high level sense of you know, how long you think that project will take and what the cost might be. Now additionally, you can view how much time has actually been logged against a project. And then you get a delta between the log time um, and, and what your estimate was. Now over here, um, you can also do this in terms of story points. Um, some people prefer the story point approach, which is um, obviously more of an agile approach to gauging the level of difficulty of a particular item. And then we'll show you some other information about each item. The team in which it's associated, if any, the work role that you assign that item to, and then any assignee that you may have. And this can also be filtered as well. Now, uh, the People tab, this is going to show me all project members. So recall, we're still in this project. And here, I've, I've got a nice column view for each of the project members. I can see all the individual work items that they're working on or have worked on for this project. And then I can see here the total number of estimated hours, how much time has been logged, and then how much time is remaining. So we can see that Mark has gone way over on his original time estimate. Whereas Cynthia, it looks like she hasn't yet gotten started. Uh, with any time logs or anything that had a, a time estimate associated with it. Um, you can also see the different types of work items that they're working on. So you get this little breakdown here. Now let's uh, just jump over to accounting real quick. So this is going to be an overview of the financials for that particular project. And as you can see, we originally had a budget for $150,000. Um, this is how much we have remaining. So we're still, we've still got plenty of uh, time to go. Um, we give you some overviews in terms of fees and costs, uh, billable versus non-billable, and also how expenses play into that project. So you can do expense tracking on RaveTree as well. Now let's go over here and let's kind of shift a little bit and move over to teams. So you can create teams on RaveTree and each team can set up their own custom workflow and you have the option to create either Kanban teams or Scrum teams. And if you don't know what those are, I mean, those are just two different types of kind of agile workflows. Um, if, if you don't know, just stick with Kanban. Um, you can kind of think of a Kanban approach as more of a continuous workflow approach. Scrum is if you're doing sprints. A lot of people like doing these uh, you know, two week or three week sprints uh, to manage their work. Um, you can put in your work in progress limit uh, if you're doing a Kanban approach or you can put in capacity um, and you can also, of course, specify the team members. But let's just look at a team. So 
So we'll check out this engineering team's page. So each team gets their own uh, page here, and you'll see we have a few different sections. Um, the main section, of course, is the board. And a lot of people like the board view because it gives you a visual way to see how each project is, is progressing um, or, or how your tasks are progressing. So just to be clear, a team could be working on items, different tasks, as we see here, from multiple projects. Um, so these are items that they might be in the same project. They might be in multiple projects because um, we certainly see cases where teams are working on multiple projects at the same time. Um, now, if you only want to view items in a particular project, but see them on this board view, you can do that by running a filter with the appropriate settings. Now, I can take my task and I can drag it through the workflow and just drop it in whatever column makes sense. Um, and here we've got a pretty simple workflow. Other teams may choose to create their own uh, more complicated workflows. It's really easy to assign and reassign people to work items. And oftentimes, work items that appear in the backlog in your to-do list might not have an assignee. So here we can see that Bill is assigned to this task, but maybe we decide that Allison's gonna be the more appropriate person for this task. Maybe Bill's busy, or for whatever reason, we want to give it to Allison. So we'll just click there. And Allison just received a real-time notification that she has been assigned this task. Now let's jump over to, let's just go to accounts since we're here, kind of jumping around a little bit. So you can put in your client information into RaveTree and you can group it either into accounts or contacts. Um, so of course accounts are going to be like businesses and we'll click on Apple. Here's the main account page and then on the right we can see all the contacts, all the people associated with that particular account. Um, so we can click over here and we can see all the projects that we've worked on for that account. Here we can see all the individual work items for that particular account. We can even view files and invoices. Um, and of course, we handle invoicing in RaveTree as well. Now, since I mentioned files, let's just go ahead and jump over to the files section. So here is your main file gallery, and this will show you all files that you've uploaded or attached to RaveTree. And we have two options there. So the first one, upload, we'll click on this. You'll notice that we integrate with just about everything. Um, Google Drive, Dropbox, Evernote. You can even take a photo from your computer and upload it to RaveTree. So we've got plenty of options for you in terms of file storage integrations. The other option is to attach a file, and we offer these integrations, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, and Microsoft OneDrive. And the difference here is if you don't want to actually upload that file to RaveTree, you can just essentially attach a link to this file on, say, Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, and the reason you might want to do that is you know, you, you don't want to uh, upload the file to RaveTree. You still want to be able to edit it, say, in Google Drive, but you do want to be able to associate it with different pieces of content. So for example, let, let's just click on this file here. This is a JPEG that we uploaded and I can view the preview for that file, but you'll notice down here that I can attach that file to multiple pieces of content. So whether, now in this case, it was a file that was uploaded to RaveTree, but it might be a file that I've attached from Google Drive uh, where I could view the preview for that file. Um, so I'm actually just linking to the, the Google Drive file in that particular case, but I can attach it to different pieces of content. So here you can see this one file is attached to two different projects, one work item and then one account. So there's, um, there's no limits here in terms of how many places this file can be attached. And you can also add tags to files so you can go and you can filter your files by tag. And then up here you can control who has access to these files. So I could give visibility to everybody or I could grant access to specific people or based on permission roles. And you can go in and create custom permission roles on RaveTree. Now let's go back over here. Let's go back to the files section and I'm just gonna click on a different file. So here, um, just a different, different image. The reason I wanted to show you this file is because if we click on approval, we have these really powerful approval workflows on RaveTree. 
And you can see here that this happens to be a two-tiered approval workflow. And Grace and Mark have already approved this file. So what happened was when I marked this file as requiring approval, uh, these two people received a notification indicating that they needed to go in and approve the file, which they have. So this stage has been approved. Then Brandon and Marnie received a notification asking for them to approve it, and we're still waiting on their approval. And they can approve it or they might reject it. Now if they reject the file, then the person who uploaded the file receives a notification indicating that it's been rejected, and they have the option to go in and upload a new version. Now let's just suppose that Brandon rejects the file. You know, he could go in here and he could add a comment. Um, he could say, you know, this is, this is why I'm rejecting the file. Um, and, and then you could go and, you know, that person could upload a new version uh, with maybe the recommended changes that, uh, that might be in the comment. So this is just a great way to kind of keep everything organized and connected. Um, and again, it, you know, it doesn't matter if the file is uploaded or attached. Now let's go over here and look at the schedule page. Okay, the schedule page is where you can go and you can handle your resource allocation needs. And by default, you have to kind of go in and, and run a report. Um, but I've already saved some filters, so let's just pull up one of these previously saved filters. And what we get on this page is we get a list of all of our employees on the left. And then on the right, I can see how many hours, in this case, how many hours that they've been allocated on a given given day. So we can see that Deanna, she's working 4.4 hours on Monday, October 16th. And I can hover over this and it will show me the breakdown between billable and non-billable hours, if that applies. I can also click on this and it will show me specifically what it is that she's working on. Now additionally, I can click on the little plus button that you'll notice when you hover over one of these cells and I can allocate someone on a work item. Um, so you'll notice since I clicked on Deanna, it auto-populated her as the assignee uh, for a work item. Um, and, I, and it also put in uh, the relevant date, which you know, I can modify this if I need to. A few other things to point out. You'll notice here that Deanna, she doesn't work on Friday, but she does work on Saturday. So this is fully customizable in terms of what a work week is for each individual. And likewise, I can go in and I can specify what a work day is for each person. It may be that Deanna works a typical eight hour work day, but maybe Cynthia only works a four hour work day and you know, she's part time, um, which is why we have this remaining toggle. So we've been looking at allocated hours, but what might be more useful is viewing how many hours of capacity each person has remaining on a given day. And you'll see down here at the bottom, company-wide, you know, we've got plenty of bandwidth. So this allows us to determine if we can take on new projects or not. So we'll just go back over to allocated. If we look up here, we can see unassigned. So this is going to show me all unassigned hours on a given day. Because sometimes you might create tasks and give them time estimates, but you don't yet know who it needs to be assigned to. And, you know, it could be easy for those items to get lost. But on RaveTree, it's really easy to find them because they're going to show up right here. And I can just click on this and it will show me, okay, we've got these two work items and they're currently unassigned. So I could just search for somebody and easily assign it to somebody all from this page without having to go anywhere. Now, you may notice these little dots above each number. And the dots tell me how many items they're working on. Okay, so two items here, one item there. Uh, pretty straightforward. The schedule page will also show you company holidays, and we don't have any on this particular view, but if you have a company holiday, it would, uh, you know, the background would be blue. It will also show you vacation days. Over here, we can see that Grace is on vacation these two days. In fact, employees can go and request PTO through RaveTree. Now just to show you some of these filter options, you can filter the schedule page. You may want to filter by work role. Perhaps you have a potential project where you know that you need certain work roles, so you can filter by those roles and then see if you have the ability to take on that new project. You can filter by team. Also by department, 
and by office. You can create departments and offices in RaveTree. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's look at the timesheet now. Um, as you recall, we looked at the timers when we first logged in, the timer widget, and of course we can access those timers up here. That's if you want to keep track of time as you're doing the work. Some people prefer the timesheet approach. And let's just go back a little bit to where we had some data. Pick a different week. So here's a timesheet that's been filled in. We can see we've got a few different items that we're logging time against this week. And we can see the work role that we're logging time against. Work roles often have billable rates associated with them. They don't have to, but they can. I can see if this time is billable or not, and then how much time I've logged on a given day. Over here on the right, we'll show you the total estimated time that we put in for this particular work item, how much time has actually been logged this week, and then how much time we have remaining. And this is useful so that each employee can know if they're at risk of going over their original time estimate or if they still have time remaining. And of course, you get some summaries down here at the bottom, broken down to billable and non-billable time. Now, let's go over here and let's look at requests. In fact, let's go to admin first because it's related to requests. We have the ability for you to create custom request forms. So we're on the admin section here, and these, this is where you go to set up different things in RaveTree. But if we click on request forms, um, you can see that we've created a few here already. And just to show you what they look like, when you create a request form, you specify the name of the form, who the reviewer is, and then what you want to appear on the form. So this is a project request form, and I'm saying to include these fields on that form. You know, in this case, we don't care if billable or uh, you know if there's story points on that form, but we do want these other fields to appear. I can also specify if the field is required or not. Okay, so once we have these forms created, then employees can go in and they can do a request. Okay, so I, I, I want to maybe submit a request for a project, and then I can select from different forms and, and put in that request. So if I click here, we can see it turns out I've been specified as the reviewer, but I'm also the person submitting it, which is fine. Um, approval needed by, uh, and then I fill out uh, the fields that were indicated on that uh, custom form that we set up. Now we can go over here to request to view all pending requests. So here we've got a few that are we're, we're waiting for approval and let's just check out this one. So notice that you know I'm the demo guy here so I'm the reviewer but this was submitted by Grace so I could go in and I could approve this request and with it being a project request if I click approve, then what would happen is Grace would be notified that I have just approved it. And it would also generate a project out of the information provided. And it, it would basically, in the notification to Grace, it would give her a link to that newly created project. So it's a great way to, to handle those project requests. And then what you end up with is a soup to nuts solution for project management where you can start with your request, run through your project, and even send out your invoice. So we do have the invoicing capabilities here as well. So that's RaveTree in a nutshell. And we certainly have other you know, details about our platform, but hopefully that gives you a pretty solid understanding of what RaveTree does. Thank you for watching.